Time now for our weekly injury update with Dr. Stephen Pomerantz of MRI Online. And Dr. Pomerantz, it seems to be that everyone is having problems with their collarbone. And we have to start with Jacksonville Jaguars quarterback Nick Foles because he has now been placed on IR, injured reserve, after having surgery due to injury to his collarbone. Tell us what all that entails. You know, most collarbone injuries do not require surgery. As long as the two bones lay next to each other, nature finds a way to heal them and put them back together. So the fact that he's had surgery means that the fracture that he had or the, the break in the collarbone or clavicle bone was displaced. Unfortunately for him, it was in the non-throwing arm. Um, that being said, it still requires a time for the bone to heal. And it, it takes a minimum of six to eight, eight weeks for a fracture to heal. When you pad on top of that the fact that they have repaired it, and usually they'll do that in bones with screws or wires or other devices, so they had to basically uh, place metal inside him, that adds a few more weeks onto the recovery process. Usually 11 or 12 weeks is about what it takes. Now, considering that it's a non-throwing shoulder, he should be back to square one, or he should be back to where he was in terms of his ability and confidence to throw since it's his non-throwing arm. Talk to us more about uh, the chance of returning to play and, and the possibility of just being prone to re-injuring that area, particularly for a quarterback. Well, you know, as long as it heals the way it's supposed to, uh, and, and when, when a bone doesn't heal, it's called a non-union or a malunion. That doesn't happen very commonly in young, young men uh, in this bone, fortunately. But if that were to happen, if there were a delay in the union, that would put him out for the season for sure. And that's always a risk with, with any fracture. Um, on the other hand, these, these fractures heal pretty well. And the fact that, uh, again, it's in his non-throwing uh, shoulder, his chance for 100% recovery is extremely high. Now, you know, you've heard of some of these athletes getting infections from the surgery. I'm assuming that is not going to occur. Uh, that's also unusual to rare. And uh, without an infection, again, he should be 100% within the 12-week time frame. Well, everyone in Kansas City want to know about their wide receiver, Tariq Hill, who was injured week, week one with a sternoclavicular, I should say that again, sternoclavicular joint injury. So maybe I got it right, maybe I didn't, but help me get it right, Dr. Pomerantz. Well, a sternoclavicular injury is an injury to the collarbone attachment. Now, the sternum is the bone in the middle of your chest, which, you know, when you put your hand in front of your chest between your pectoralis muscles, which every, every person and athlete knows, is a firm, flat bone. But at the very top of it is where the clavicle bone or the collarbone comes in and articulates. There's a little joint there. It takes a tremendous amount of force out, tremendous, to, to dislocate or disassociate that collarbone from the sternum. So the gentleman that, that fell on our player, Tariq Hill, put all his weight and his body down, down on this player to, to make that happen. Um, not implying that it was intentional, but again, it takes a tremendous amount of force. Now, the fact that he went to the hospital uh, is an indicator that, uh, that the type of dislocation was, was of greater concern or the type of subluxation was of greater concern, and here's why. When that bone uh, displaces can either go up towards your head it can go down which is less common it can go forward and all you've got in front there is the skin and the and the tissues and that's okay but if it goes backwards what lives behind there are the great blood vessels of your body and your chest that come out of your heart so you can injure those you can contuse them you can tear them and as a precaution once they realized on an x-ray that that injury to that joint had pushed the bone back into these blood vessels. They took him to the hospital as a precaution. They checked those blood vessels out. Uh, they discharged him, so I'm assuming that everything checked out and there wasn't an issue there. Um, you know, typically these injuries have a lot of variability in terms of their return to play. Uh, I've seen people come back, such as Danny Amendola, in, you know, two to three weeks. I've seen individuals that are reaching over their head constantly that are never comfortable doing that, uh, for the rest of the season. 
So he could be back in as little as two two weeks or three weeks, uh, depending upon how severe the subluxation was, or you know he could be out the rest of the season. Um, it really depends. And uh, in addition, unlike the clavicle fracture, once it heals, it's over. Uh, once this thing heals, it's going to be a source of irritation for him uh, during the season. Uh, well, Dr. Pomerantz, it, lucky for players like Nick Foles and Tyreek Hill, and for all of us that we have doctors like yourself and many others who are taking good care of us, because some of these injuries sound like it's very serious and goes beyond whether or not we can get back to playing football, but just getting back to living our lives. So thank you for joining us for our weekly injury update with Dr. Pomerantz with MRI Online.